fellow friends, we know children of all ages are fascinated by toys and games. Toy or game based pedagogy can be a good strategy for teaching learning of science. These may help in the development of various domains such as cognitive, psychomotor, socio emotional, communicative among learners. So, whatever strategy one may follow during teaching learning process and to create meaningful innovations, it is very important for a facilitator to establish a rapport with students and can plan various tasks by involving them. We know that some students are good in collecting materials, some are good at art and craft, some may show interest in conducting experiments, some communicate very well, some are good at reporting and handling data and the list is endless. When students show such kind of behavior during teaching learning process, this means they have involved themselves in the process of science. Before developing and designing a toy or game, facilitator may encourage students to work in groups. She must ensure that groups are heterogeneous in nature with children from different background and abilities. Let us not forget that children with special needs may be given equal opportunity in making of toy or game. Now let us take an example of toy or game based pedagogy from science. We have designed and developed a toy which will help our students to understand the concept of science in a joyful way. We have with us Dr. Ravi Jodh. She is working in Navyuk School, Lakshmi Bai Nagar, Delhi. Dr. Ravi Jodh, uh, I would like to ask you first that since we have designed and developed a toy and we have also created a game out of it. Okay, first and foremost, I would request you to kindly show it to our viewers how we have developed this toy. Oh yes, this science toy developed by you was a very effective tool as a transactional strategy. Oh great. I'm really excited to share my experience. Let me tell my viewers how with the help of their students they can very easily develop this toy. So here as you can see I have a cardboard mm -hmm. in a circular shape with colored paper pasted on it mm -hmm. which has been divided into five equal parts. Dr. Ravi Jot, here I would like to add something. See, as a facilitator, uh, this toy should be given to the visually impaired children, if at all they have anyone in the class, so that, you know, visually impaired children can hold it and feel its shape. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. That's a very important point. And in fact, all uh, our classes have inclusive setup. True. And uh, then after that, once we have divided it into five equal parts, what we have to do is we have to take stickers with names of metal salts written on it mm -hmm. and paste one each in all the parts. Again, I have a question here. If you have visually impaired student in your classroom, what extra we have done in this toy? Okay. For that, what we have done is that we have used 3D uh, outliner. Mm -hmm. which has a little of embossing effect. Oh, okay. can let me feel it. Oh, yes. But suppose our viewers, our teachers are not having this kind of material, what extra they can use? Well, uh, this can be made tactile with mm -hmm. the help of any locally available material mm -hmm. such as wax or maybe a piece of twig or mm -hmm. a rope mm -hmm. or a thread. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can uh, make it uh, tactile. Okay, but uh, that's fine. One can use small pieces of stone or beads or maybe rope, but we have to remember that uh, material has to be eco-friendly. Oh yes, that yes. is true. And this way, uh, some children living in remote villages of our country mm -hmm. can also uh, procure these materials very easily. That's true, that's true. Yes, uh, another very important point is mm -hmm. that alternatively, Mm -hmm. You have to write the name of the metal salt mm -hmm. with the help of the braille too, as you can see here. Okay, let me feel this. Yes, looks great, looks great. That's, that's called that inclusive toy, you know. You know, all kind of children can be, you know, play with this toy. That's yeah. beautiful. Okay, so now the base of our toy is ready. Mm -hmm. And now, after that, we have to prepare uh, another small stick-like portion mm -hmm. which has to be cut in an arrow shape 
what we can do is we can take a wooden uh, piece oh, or we can take a hard cardboard oh yes it has yeah. to be uh, yeah. stiff yeah yeah and uh, you can uh, paste uh, colored paper on it mm -hmm. and divide it into equal parts and if you can see it clearly and on this wooden piece or uh, the cardboard paper mm -hmm. which is a little stiff mm -hmm. uh, i've pasted a colored uh, sheet on it divided it into 12 equal parts mm -hmm. and written symbols of metals on it mm -hmm. and now when this piece is ready we have to fix this in our circular disc in such a manner mm -hmm. in the center mm -hmm. with the help of the nail that mm -hmm. this is free to move okay okay in the, uh, around the circular disc mm -hmm. okay so now uh, if 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 we look into it it looks like a wall clock yeah. Am I right? Yes. And then you are talking about this needle and this is hand of a clock. Yes. Wow, great. So now I know that is why we have named this toy as displacement clock. So ultimately you got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now that our toy is ready and mm -hmm. the students can really play with it. Okay. Since uh, we have developed this uh, toy, uh, can you please quickly tell our viewers that how we can play with it. Ultimately, we would like to know the rules of the game, okay, which yeah. is very important because we are going to play it in the classroom. And I think yours, you have used this game with your students also. Definitely. So quickly coming to the rules of the game, mm -hmm. the facilitator has to divide the class into two parts, mm -hmm. team A and team B. Mm -hmm. The facilitator can hold the clock in mm -hmm. his or her hand. Mm -hmm. and. One member from each team can come and stand next to the facilitator. True. And maybe a volunteer from the class can also hold it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's true because we have to involve our students during teaching learning process. We have to give them equal chance. Yes. Okay. And uh, then the team getting the first chance hmm. by toss has to say aloud name of a metal from the hand of the clock. Okay, let me do it for you. Okay, uh, if I say iron, it's written there. Yeah. F okay, FE, written. yeah. The member of team A will move the disc of the clock. Okay, let, let me hold this disc and you can move the yeah. clock. So, when I'm moving it freely, mm -hmm. we have to allow it to, to wait stop. on its own. Okay, see, can I tell you where it has stopped? Yes. It has stopped at copper sulfate solution. Wow. So the stick has stopped at one of the metal salt solution and it is copper sulfate. Mm -hmm. Now, the player of the other team, B, has to answer two questions. Okay. And you can see these questions on the screen. Question A, does iron metal displace copper metal from copper sulfate solution? Mm -hmm. And if yes, then write the balanced chemical equation. If the member of team B answers both the questions correctly, they are okay. awarded two points. Fine. And if they answer only one question, they will be getting one point. Okay. And well, in case they are not able to answer, then the chance will be given to the team, team A. A. And team A will get a bonus points. Definitely. Okay, and that's yes, great. The game will continue like this and the team that collects maximum point, mm -hmm. they will be the winners. Okay. Uh, very nicely you have explained the uh, toy, uh, you have talked about the game, uh, but one thing is very important here. Facilitator, uh, see we know that children will enjoy playing game, playing with toys, we, we all know about that Dr. Ravi Jodh, but the most important thing here is that facilitator must discuss the science behind the game. Definitely, yes. So through this game, I think our viewers must have understood that we are talking about reactivity series. Am I right? Yeah. And this reactivity series one can see on the screen. And now children can easily answer that reactive metal will replace less reactive metal from its salt solution or molten state, isn't it? Yes. That is very good. But one thing I have seen, uh, that's my experience and I think that must be your experience too as a teacher. Uh, I've seen children of class 10th. And somewhat we talk about this in class 8 also. I have seen children of class 10 finds reactivity series difficult to understand. And I have seen students creating poems, songs and stories to remember it, isn't it? One such example or one such poem we have also created and which our viewers can see on the screen. 
and I would love it if you will read it loudly. Okay, my pleasure. So the title of the poem is Tick Tock Displacement Clock. Mm -hmm. This is the clock with single hand carrying metals on the hand. Displaying salt solutions on the ground, announcing the metal revolves the hand around. Wanting to hit the salt solution. Oh, iron hitting towards blue solution? Better call it copper sulfate solution. Iron can turn it to green solution. Yes, displaces copper from its salt solution. Chemically known as ferrous sulfate, sulfate, sulfate solution. solution. That's good. This is known as displacement, displacement reaction. reaction. Yes, good. Uh, well, so far we have talked about this toy and game and we have used this during teaching learning process. But one thing is very important that this toy or we can say game can be used as a tool for assessment. Oh, that's great. Yeah. One such question our viewers can see on the screen and I'm going to read it. You're provided with iron sulfate solution. Which among the following metallic stirrer or I can say spoon will you use to stir iron sulfate solution? And the, this is a multiple choice question and choice A is silver, choice B is magnesium, choice C is sodium, choice D is aluminium. Now children can easily answer I think it will be very easy for them to say that which metal will replace what and can answer this question. Definitely they will ponder over it, explore and with the help of this toy definitely they will know the answer. And you know I think uh, we are making science joyful isn't it? Uh, what would you like to say at the end of the session? Yeah, so let our teachers use toy pedagogy in the classroom and make learning joyful for students and give freedom to children to be creative and innovate toys and games and have fun. Wow, great. So through this toy, the learning outcomes which can be achieved by our students are displayed on the screen. But remember, our student must understand science behind it, which is very important. But yes, keeping the fun element in it. Am I right? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you.